Hello, my name is Andy and I am the Village Idiot. I'm armed with a car and a GoPro and an unhealthy amount of time on my hands. I'm using that time to attempt to visit every civil parish in England. You're watching the Newark and Sherwood series, a district of 84 civil parishes right in the centre of Nottinghamshire. Come with me as we delve into one of them. Welcome back to Newark and Sherwood. The sun has definitely come out now and uh, the bright blue sky and the sunshine and the heat is all gonna add to the fun of this rather long walk around. I say long, it's a long walk, but it's a very small place, but it does have something of major historical importance to this area. And it's not this building here. This building here is a pub and that's its car park. The pub is over there. We'll see that as we walk around, but I'm referring to what's behind that gate right there. This is Kellum. This Newark and Sherwood video is sponsored by Past Days, a family history blog by June Terrington. You'll find a link in the description. Here's my disclaimer for people who may be watching me for the first time. I say things as I would in my native accent and dialect. As a result, I may not pronounce things in the same way as the locals do. Remember, I'm a visitor. It's impossible to know everything. Leave me a comment, spin me a like and bash that subscribe button. Let's get to today's parish video. Welcome to Kellum, a small yet extremely important settlement to the north of Newark-on-Trent. This place has one of the finest examples of Victorian Gothic architecture anywhere in England. A small village, here we are about three miles northwest of Newark on a bend in the A617 road near its crossing of the River Trent, a bend which causes more than a few problems for lorry drivers. It's primarily a farming village these days, with a smattering of farms and farm buildings around the place, although historically the landowners here would have been here for different reasons. You see, the biggest and most important structure in Kellum is Kellum Hall, which was the primary residence of the Manor's Sutton family, the very same who we learned about in Aram. The Kellum estate was first acquired by William Sutton from the Fulderham family. The hall was upgraded by William's son, Robert Sutton, who held the title of First Baron Lexington after the Civil War. The original hall no longer stands, but I'll explain that in a while. Village-wise, Kellum doesn't have a lot out there on the internet for me to go on, so a lot of this one is just my experience of the place. That said, the hall has more than enough to fill one video. It really is the primary landmark here. It's got a church too within the grounds, and there's a campsite, there's a pub, and a popular wedding venue too. And let's not forget the bridge over the river either. Time for another wander around Newark and Sherwood. For our amble around Kellum, we need to get the residential areas out of the way first, because the main body of this video will focus on the hall. This is Ollerton Road, leading north away from Kellum. This might look like it's a farm track or some other kind of private road, but it's a public footpath which runs between some horse fields. It'll take us to Broadgate Lane. Once on Broadgate Lane, we come to a property called the Old Bothy. None of the properties seen so far have been what you would call special. However, all that is about to change. So, so far around Kellum, you're probably thinking to yourself, there's not a lot here. It's not very interesting. Well, things are about to go up a notch.
Kellum doesn't have any shops, but it does have this stall outside a house on Broadgate Lane, but currently it's empty. I'm sure this will soon be filled back up, so remember, buy local people. Kellum used to have a post office and it was this building here. The old post office was on the right, whilst on the left was a tea rooms. It would appear both have now been converted to residences. After joining the A617 for a short way, we come to a gate off the main road which features a blue sign saying Renaissance at Kellum Hall, and we're about to enter the grounds. So that sign answers a question. I did not know whether or not I'd be able to walk into the grounds of Kellum Hall. And if that sign is to be believed, I certainly can. I don't have a dog with me. I have a camera instead, but you know, it's all the same difference. Walking is allowed here. And it's a good thing because doing Kellum without looking at Kellum Hall would be a little bit daft. This is by far and away the largest, most historic, important building there is in this village. Let's go and check it out. The hall is coming, but I found the grounds to be just as interesting. Check out this amazing lawn. You are permitted to walk dogs in the grounds, but only around the perimeter. These were pretty cool. I have no idea what you'd call them though. They look like giant goblets. Whatever they are, they add a nice touch to the entrance, and I like the blue colour too. So then to Kellum Hall itself. In recent years, Kellum Hall has been used as the base for Newark and Sherwood District Council. However, they moved out in 2017. It's primarily now an events venue. Here's a handy map of the grounds and the buildings within them. Keep in mind here, there are other buildings Kellum Hall own in the village too. I'll show you where we'll be walking in a moment. Kellum Hall is a Grade 1 listed building and those grounds run to a size of some 52 acres. Remember the Manor Sutton family mentioned in Airham? Well, Kellum Hall was originally where they lived. So originally my route was going to come in through the main entrance which is just a bit further up from where I did come in which was down here. There's a entrance there which that's where we came in. So we are currently here in this little car park the main sort of Kellum Hall, the carriage court, the gym border in the Great Hall, the reception, the cafe, that's all to my left. That's all this here. And basically I'm just going to walk along here across to the King's Walk and up here to the church and then come up this footpath past the campsite and then back round to rejoin the main village. I'm hoping for some pretty decent shots of the hall by doing that. The Kellum Hall you see before you is not the original. In fact, this is the third one. The first house was destroyed by fire in the reign of William and Mary, and its first replacement was built in around 1730. Again, the building was also destroyed by fire in 1857, when the owner was in Italy, and it would again be rebuilt. The present Kellum Hall is considered a masterpiece of high Victorian Gothic architecture. So we're about to go up the King's Walk, named thanks to King Charles I. In 1647 he surrendered at the end of the English Civil War at nearby Southall and was held in Kellum for several days. In 1865 George Gilbert Scott reused many of the design details of Kellum Hall on a much larger scale for the facade of the Midland Grand Hotel at St Pancras Railway Station in London, completed in 1876. There are some lovely statues around the grounds, which is an ideal time to mention the Kellum Rood, a bronze sculpture depicting Christ on the cross. It's no longer here, as it's now in London. So believe it or not, within the trees here, there's a little playground. I didn't expect this. Just come through this little copse here. It's, uh, it's a quite a nice little playground as well, looking at it. I probably shouldn't have walked across there, but never mind. Uh, um, here it is had overgrown so it probably doesn't get used much but I never expected to see one of these in the grounds of Kellum Hall it's like a little castle oh and it looks like it's uh, out of use as well look it's got tape on it so currently not in use that also within the grounds of the hall is Kellum's church this is St Wilfred's, again a Grade 1 listed structure just like the Hall. It forms a joint ecclesiastical parish with Aram and both the Muscombs. The church is medieval and was restored in 1874 by the Durham-based architect Charles Hodgson Fowler. 
There's a memorial in the chancel to Robert Sutton, who died in 1723, and to his wife Margaret, who died in 1703. The tower contains four bells hung in an elfic Z-form frame, apparently by Robert Lee of Arum, dated 1891. The treble dates from the early 17th century. There's some tennis courts next to it. I have absolutely no idea why these would be here in all honesty. It might be they're used by people who come to Kellen for the campsite, but that's just a guess. So now we're on the campsite, and even though there are no tents or caravans here at the moment, you can tell this is the campsite. There's a few things that give it away. There's an electricity point just there. That's that green box. There's a couple of those. There's uh, one over there, and I can see at least three others around the perimeter over there. And there's one even in the middle as well. That's four then. <laughs> so there's plenty of uh, electricity hookups if you want to bring your tent or caravan. I'm not quite sure. Um, what's allowed here on the campsite to be honest with you it could just be one could be the other could be both i don't know so uh, that's something you'd have to find out if you wanted to come here now we can take a footpath that runs around the edge of the campsite which is where i'm heading for right now it'll take us back to the main entrance and then we'll head back into the village so here we are then on the perimeter of the grounds which is where dogs can be walked this is a nice little woodland path and given how hot it was the shade was helpful here Back onto the A617 now, I took a shot of this speed warning sign. This is a 30 mile per hour limit here and I regularly saw numbers in excess of 40 whilst walking up to it. Please slow down people. Directly opposite Kellam Hall is Kellam House Hotel. Built in 1903, this is an imposing Edwardian manor house and it sits in nine acres of private grounds. It's been privately owned since 2009. It's used primarily for weddings and other events. In fact, it's won many awards for its weddings. Over the last decade, it's become one of the most in-demand venues in all of Nottinghamshire. That's some feat. Now, if you don't drive and you need public transport to come and enjoy the delights of Kellam and Kellam Hall and the hotel that's behind me, you can get to this place on public transport. Here are those all important magic numbers. 28 and 29 stagecoach, 227 travel right, 300 and 330 knots bus connect. And the stop is handily placed right outside the hotel, dead opposite the entrance to Kellam Hall. How's that for handy? We're not quite finished with Kellam Hall because there's another couple of buildings yet to see. Here in Home Farm Close is an impressive building as well with a tall spire. Maybe a former stable block? Around the bend and we're heading for the pub next. This building is part of the Kellam Hall estate. It's called the Lodge. This and the gateway date from 1858 and were probably built as well by George Gilbert Scott. Right opposite that, there's a parish notice board. I was getting a little worried about finding one of these. Kellam is the last of the set of the three, which form Aram, Kellam and Staythorpe Parish Council. And handily, there's also a map of the village here too. This is obviously very old, but Kellam hasn't changed much over the years, you know. So one thing this map will do is show you where we are and where we've been. So I parked here on this road, which is that road right there. In fact, you can see my car over there. So I've walked up to this junction and then up this track, public footpath, back on myself down Broadgate Lane, through the gate into Kellam Hall and around Kellam Hall past the church all the way around here to the entrance that's the hotel just there and then i've just gone into home farm close a couple of moments ago now i'm on this road and i'm at the fox inn which is the pub which i'll show you in a minute it's this building here and the remainder of the walk will basically take me onto kellam bridge over the river trent and then up blacksmith lane and back to the car there okay not a very big place, Kellam, to be honest with you. And the hall is certainly the most um, impressive landmark. It's the, the, the thing that people come to Kellam most for. But uh, I'm going to be uh, fairly confident in saying that there's still some bits and bobs to see around here. The bridge certainly 
is very interesting. Let's go and see that. The Fox Inn is Kellum's only pub. It's open every day, although for some reason it opens a little earlier on Tuesdays. It's a large multi-room venue with a bar, a restaurant area, a large car park and a playground. To get over the Trent here you have to cross Kellam Bridge which carries the A617 towards Newark and its junction with the A46. It was built in 1856 using bricks that were made on Broadgate Lane. On its eastern side the road makes a sharp 90 degree turn to the right. This causes problems with inexperienced drivers and there have been several cases of lorries which have become wedged on the bridge. There's been a bridge at Kellam since the Trent was diverted thanks to the Suttons. It's been widened several times and it's also been a listed building since 1951. The level of the Trent here is regularly monitored together with a few other nearby areas in order to avert flooding. One of those other areas is a factory which you can see from here. Now cast your mind back to the West Lindsay series and the Bardney episode. You might remember the Rivita factory that used to be a sugar factory. Kellum has one of those as well. Doesn't make Rivita. <laughs> it's still making sugar, I believe. It's there. Now it's not technically in Kellum. It's uh, just over the boundary into Newark, but it can be seen from this bridge in the distance. The route ends now with Blacksmith Lane. Kellum's oldest houses above the flood level of the River Trent can be found on here. It's got the old blacksmith shop and also a wheelwright's on it too. There's a village tradition that states that when King Charles I was held prisoner in Kellum after surrendering to the Scots, he was kept in a house on Blacksmith Lane. I wonder how true that is. This house was perhaps the most interesting of the lot. It's called Gas House, which suggests to me that at one time this was perhaps something to do with the gas supply to Kellam Hall. Again, that's just a guess. Now I was unsure as to whether or not to give this one a picture bit or not because it's so small. I think it deserves one, but it might just be a case of more pictures uh, of Kellam Hall, areas I didn't walk to within the hall. Let's see what I found for you. And we end today's episode where it began, outside the Fox Inn and the entrance gate, or one of the entrance gates for Kellam Hall at the lodge. So it's time to hop in the car and drive that away because where I'm going next is a place that consists of two villages, one fairly big, the other very, very small, but together they make up one civil parish. And it's about time I put that one on the map. Hopefully the sun I don't want to I don't really want to say this considering we don't see the sun very often in this country hopefully the sun goes behind a few of them clouds because now it's starting to get quite warm out here so yeah hopefully I'm not going to be as baking as I am right now this has been the parish of Kellum in Newark and Sherwood and I've been Andy also known as the village idiot and I'm out